We'll get started here shortly. Holly, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. All right. Uh, good evening. We'll begin the meeting. It's Tuesday, December 22nd of 2020. This is the Stoughton City Council meeting. The first order of business is the roll call. Holly? Borsla? Here. Caravello? Here. Doom? Here. Kylie? Here. Hirsch? Here. Hunt? Here. Jensen? <clears throat> Other person, Jensen? Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> uh, Lagaki? Here. Mayeski? Here. Reeves? Here. Schumacher? Festively here. And Tukowski? Here. All right, there are 12 elders present. All right, thank you, Holly. Uh, before we get started, I do have a proclamation that came through um, public safety. Uh, Alder person Lagaki did some work on it. I did a few updates since uh, we put the one in the packet, and it goes like this. Whereas the year 2020 has been an unprecedented year, worldwide pandemic due to coronavirus, coronavirus and racial inequities in the United States have been at the forefront of our society. It is clear public service is more vital than ever and Stoughton community strives to celebrate and honor all those for goodness, safety and justice. Whereas January 9th of every year is recognized as Law Enforcement Appreciation Day, we recognize this day in honor and memory of all officers and staff that serve our Stoughton community. Whereas there are nearly 900,000 police officers across the United States who dedicate themselves to serve and protect while facing extremely dangerous situations. They play an integral part in our society as they are the guardians of our way of life and deserve our support. Whereas the Stoughton strives to be a safe, vibrant community, our police department practices efforts in a fair and conscientious manner. Among their policing values are the following. Remain committed to a shared and open relationship of involvement with all segments of our community in activities affecting the quality of life. Strive to maintain, maintain the highest levels in integrity and professionalism in all our members and activities and maintain service as our primary goal or while pursuing those who commit crimes. Whereas the city of Stoughton recognizes the many strains placed on our police department, we acknowledge the continued dedication of the police department in protecting our citizens' properties and lives. We further call upon all member, members of our community to take time throughout the year to show their support of law enforcement. Please consider personally thanking them, writing the letter, wearing blue, or changing out your porch light bulb to blue. Therefore, let it be known that the city of Stoughton proclaims January 9th is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Thank you. Are there any, are there any communications uh, from Alders tonight? If I could, Tim. Sure. Okay, I um, just wanted to, um, uh, personally thank our police department. I think they're doing a wonderful job. And I think the chief and all of his staff, his uh, sworn officers and uh, the civilian office, uh, civilian employees, um, I thank you for a job well done. And then the other thing I wanted to add is just, uh, I just wanted to wish uh, everybody a happy uh, new year and a Merry Christmas. Okay, thank you. Any other communications from Alders? I wanted to call attention to a couple important things happening with COVID on the uh, state level in case people have missed it. 
that um, the state is releasing a new COVID uh, contact tracing app uh, tomorrow and that they will be making available um, free at home COVID testing. Uh, I think these are pretty two pretty important steps to continue to contain this as much as we can in the meantime. Thanks. Thank you. Any other others have communications? Yes, I do. I just want to thank all the elders and the city staff and the mayor for all their hard work during this past year, um, the COVID and the other um, protests and, you know, really We've, I think we've come together well and worked together well to really address a lot of sensitive and very needed issues in this in our town and uh, I applaud all of you guys for um, really working hard and get keeping our you know restaurants and downtown businesses open and trying to keep everybody safe and you know thinking you know, outside the box to solve some really difficult problems. So thank you all. Thank you. Any other communications? And I have a few. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank all the members in the communities that wrote cards and have them delivered by different organizations to our assisted living centers. There is literally hundreds of cards that were written that were dropped off this week for the holidays. And then also I wanted to um, let members of the CACP know that I'd like to make a request to have the CAP com committee look at a couple items. Uh, the first item will be um, as we transition from virtual meetings to hopefully hybrid and ultimately in-person meetings uh, take a look at our policies and related to that, uh, especially the city council. We have done some initial testing in the council chambers uh, with our IT department. And it looks like uh, when we do make that transition to hybrid, we may have to switch over to Zoom at that point. And certainly if we do, we'll provide any necessary training that alders would need to make that transition. Uh, but we have to make sure that our policies are consistent uh, to allow us to do that. And I imagine CACP will be working with our attorneys to do that. And then the second one would be to have the CACP look at a few of our council rules uh, regarding um, public comment, and then also regarding kind of our practice as far as uh, taking things, you know, the night of uh, a meeting to the council meeting immediately following and really how we feel about that and in what situations, you know, is it appropriate to do that if at all? So, uh, you know, I ask uh, Chairperson Hiley to maybe put that on your list of, of future agenda items for CACP. Some of it is really not as pressing as others, but certainly I uh, want to at least get them on your radar as, as you work with Holly to schedule uh, future CACP meetings. Um, that's all I have, unless anybody else has any other communications. Just for a clarification, that last part, were you talking about, for example, the um, the items that pass finance in one night and then come to council the, the same night? Yeah, typically it's either finance or if there's a plan commission meeting the night before where there's not a lot of turnaround. And I really just want everyone to be on the same page on whether we need criteria or not in order to be able to make those decisions so we can expedite them without having any hard feelings and avoid all the stress that goes with that. Okay, made note of all of those. Thank you. Uh, thank you, appreciate it. Um, any other communications? All right, hearing none, we'll go right into the public comment. And I had three people signed up. Um, I'm looking for one of them right now. The first one that signed up was Al Waller. And it looks like Al is on here. So Al, if you want to unmute yourself, uh, you'll have three minutes to speak. Holly will keep track of the time. And uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. I have talked to several people about the city's plan for a whitewater park. 
Most of them think it is the stupidest thing they have ever heard of. We, the people of Stoughton, have elected you to spend our tax money wisely, and you have a fiduciary responsibility to us. This Whitewater Park debacle is the biggest waste of taxpayers' money I have ever seen. You are flushing our tax money right down the Hare River toilet. This is a marketing photo you have posted on the city's website. Are you river ready? It shows a young couple and a child. How can you possibly justify using a child in your propaganda campaign? Every summer, Dane County shuts down the beaches. Madison, Dane County, and the Wisconsin DNR all have websites devoted to educating people about the health risks associated with blue-green algae. The following is directly from their websites. Blue-green algae is toxic to people and pets and should be avoided. Do not swim in water that looks like pea soup, green or blue paint, or that has a scum layer or puffy blobs floating on the surface. Do not let children play with scum layers, even from the shore. If you have symptoms you think are due to contact with the blooms, call the Poison Control Center at 800-222-1222. So here's my challenge to each of you who is voting to build a whitewater park in Stoughton. Number one, get yourself river ready. Number two, invite your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, your nieces and nephews, your friends to come and swim with you in the Ohio River. Number three, Spend one hour in the Hare River and make sure you submerge your head three times to ensure that the toxic blue green algae gets in your eyes, your ears, your nose, and your throat. If you and your family can survive one hour in the Hare River, then please take a photo of your family and post it on the city's website. So I just want to show you what I think of the, um, are you your Hare River ready? If you and your family are not willing to go in the water yourself, then I suggest you vote against the Whitewater Park. City Council, wake up. Stop being lemmings. Stop being part of a contamination cover-up. Stop the Whitewater Park insanity and stop wasting our taxpayers' money. You're muted, Tim. All right, thank you. Uh, the next one comes from Sharon Mason Borsma, and Sharon asked me to read this tonight. And this is also regarding the uh, Stoughton Dam removal and the Whitewater Park. I would like my comments to be read. Stoughton Sediment Assessment Report. The City of Stoughton currently operates the Stoughton Dam at 4th Street Bridge in the City of Stoughton. It is located on the Yahara River, has a hydraulic height of 9 feet, and creates an impoundment call, called the Stoughton Mill Pond. Originally built in 1916, rebuilt in 2009 for a cost of approximately $500,000 of taxpayers' money. The DNR states now that the dam is in good working order. Turn of events. Nine years later, the city is seriously wanting to remove the Stoughton Dam to build a whitewater park that would be built at the site of Man Park. Claiming that the Stoughton Dam is unsafe was voiced by some city leaders from an incident on July 2nd of 2018 when a kayaker got too close to the dam and was safely rescued. A witness stated the dam gates were very high as the water level of the Yahara River from all the rain that had previously happened highest and fastest ever seen in 50 years, stated the bystander. One of the tests needed for the Stoughton Dam Removal Whitewater Park build is a sediment assessment report prepared for the city of Stoughton by Interfluve, submitted in 9 of 2019, revised in 12 of 2019. First phase of this process is an assessment of the quality and character of the impounded sediment. In May of 2019, uh, by biometric survey and sediment depth survey was done on the Stoughton Mill Pond. July 2019, a containment analysis. Differing elevations between the two surface models produce estimates of the total accumulated sediment volume of the impoundment. 
a small sample only was taken upstream when Palmer and downstream of the West Pedestrian, West Jefferson Pedestrian Bridge, but provided the guide for assessing the potential background level of pollutants mm -hmm. in the Yahara River transported by impoundment. What were the results? Total estimate, estimated volume in impounded sediment in the Stoughton Mill Pond was 46,700 cubic yards area within the area of the Stoughton Dam and 500, 400 feet of the pedestrian bridge. Thick sediment deposits on the left bank of the Stoughton Mill, Mill Pond is 34,700 cubic yards. Depth to refusal does not pick up all service deposits, especially near the dam where sediment thickness could not be safely measured. A review of watershed uses and potential point sources of contaminants, i.e. large chemicals, historical spills, underground utilities, and storage tanks reveal six small incidents still open investigations of petroleum, volatile organic compounds, polysilic aromic hydrocarbons, heavy metals, and perchlo, I, I can't even pronounce that word, perchlo violine. 37 closed incidents, including petroleum, chlorinated hyd hydrocarbons, diesel range organics, heavy metals, and volatile organic compounds. Furthermore, the City of Stoughton report stated aquatic, wildlife, and humans can experience chronic or acute toxicity from direct contact with sediments and if left exposed after dam removal or dredging can cause posed risk of exposures through direct contact to sediment pollutants by people and burrowing animals, depending on future land use exposed to contaminants, runoff and infiltration can move both sediment and sediment absorbed into groundwater and surface water. Question, do you want to kayak, swim, and have water fun with family and friends visitors at Stoughton Whitewater Park in the future? And then I had one more from Randy Ree. And this one is in regards to the senior center, and he'd like his comments to be read, to be read. Uh, comments. Selling the building attached to the senior center would cause many businesses to close and leave many people out of a job. This would not help our community at all. Please don't put anyone out of work now during the virus that is going around. It would hurt many families. And that's what we had for public comment tonight. And I also understand that there is one other person that um, would like to speak. Um, it looks like um, Brad Dillman, are you, you want to unmic yourself and go ahead and speak? You get three minutes. Yeah, I can't hear you, Brad. I guess you, you might want to try rec reconnecting, Brad. Go right into the agenda. Right now, can, you, can you hear me now? Oh, now I can. Go ahead. You have three minutes. All right. Okay. Uh, this is Steve Meyer, Shaker Saloon. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, Merry Christmas and all that stuff to everybody. Uh, with your families. Um, see, my family of uh, Shaker Saloon, and um, um, there's going to be a the safety commission did a gave, is giving a report to the city council that I object to. We had a quasi hearing in which we were not represented by an attorney, and they went through with it. We were denied representation. Um, but I object uh, to what they're going to provide for you. They have a a packet or a from what they found, um, and um, I object to it. We were never getting, we were never given copies of anything, whether it oral or written, 
We were never given a police report, which is unconstitutional to charge somebody with doing something and not providing a police report. Um, and we were never given any copies of anything, uh, no written copies or no oral copies of their own of, of public records that we need. And we were never provided anything. Um, we have you guys have our emails, but yet we've never received anything. And this goes back to December 3rd for our safety meeting. Um, I appreciate what police officers do. I'm one of those people that will will applaud uh, January 9th. I have a lot of friends and detectives that are on the force in Madison. And uh, so I, I, I love the boys in blue. And um, I love everyone that I was in military for six years. So I love and appreciate the hard work that goes into that. But I think we're being discriminated against and unfairly treated. We're being forced to shut down because we play a hip hop music. We played that at the bar for a year or for six months that we've been open, six months close to COVID. And we've never had an issue, never a problem. But now we're running a riotous bar because we play hip hop music. It's a civil liberty. I find it very hard to I find it very, very, very hard to teach my children, which I've adopted seven children and uh, mentor 20 more in Madison, Wisconsin. And I find it very hard to do that when my own liberties and other liberties are being crushed. So I, I, I don't want to hold anyone responsible for any decisions that are civil liberties but I, I will, I will go the extent of people's rights. And that's what I fought for. And that's what the boys in blue fight for. And so I, I find it, I'm in a quagmire. What did I do wrong if it's a civilly protected case? What did I do wrong? I've had one violation in a year, six months I've been open out of a year of close to COVID and I've been gotten crushed. The business has been shut down for two months now. That's three minutes. Well, I think you kind of heard my frustration, guys. And um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. One violation, we've had one violation, no citations for anything. So thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. And as a reminder, our council rules really prohibit us from engaging in conversation during public comment. But this yeah. is on the agenda item, so some of the the issues that you brought forward may be discussed at that point. Okay. And well, thank you for hearing. Thank you for listening to me and my frustration. Thank you. Um, that's all I had signed up for public comment. Yep. Um, the next item would be the uh, consent agenda. And the consent agenda consists of city council minutes and a mayor's appointment to seniors in need. I would entertain a motion to approve I, the consent. I so move. I so move, Your Honor. Is there a second? No. Second. And would anybody like either one of the items removed and acted on it separately? Could we? Uh, could you remove the appointment and say a few words about the person, please? Sure. Or yep, I can do that. So we'll just uh, the motion would be um to approve the council minutes from december 8th okay I, I so move i withdraw my motion uh based on his request to have it removed and so i i withdraw that motion and present a motion to have uh i have uh, just the council minutes okay i don't know if we have to go through that but certainly i can accept that um any discussion on the minutes and none all in favor say aye. 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 aye 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 any opposed that motion carries so i would need a separate motion for that second item anybody care to make it i'll move to I'm, approve I'm move. go ahead i'm sorry i'll move to approve is there a second i second all right and then I, I think there was a question. Um, so the appointment is for Amy Allen and she was uh, recommended by uh, members on the committee. 
uh, we had somebody that um, decided it was time to step aside. So she would be filling that position. That's pretty much um, the extent of my knowledge of it. And that's typically how most of the appointments are set, especially um, the ones that regard the senior center. We usually, I usually get referrals for those. May I, may I speak to this, Your Honor? Sure. Okay, so um, I have attended a number of uh, seniors in need meetings and it is an, it's an incredibly important thing that we do. Uh, the purpose of, this, of the seniors in need is to assist people uh, who are seniors who have special needs in our community. Um, and um, it, it's, a, it's, it's a meeting comprised of, well, when I, when I had attended, it was probably five or six people um, uh, on that committee who would go through and look at requests, especially made by our uh, case managers for people in need. And, the, the, and most of it was financial. Uh, and uh, the, the people would hear a anonymous presentation and then um, and then uh, uh, and then uh, a presentation as to what the needs were and then uh, discuss and make a, and do a vote on it. Um, and it's, it's important that this be a full contingent of members uh, because it is such an important committee. Uh, and um, it, it happens, uh, it, I believe it happens monthly. And uh, just so people know what seniors in need is, I wanted to present that. And I would highly recommend the appointment of this person for uh, a membership on seniors in need. All right, thank you, Alder Person Forsma. If you want more information, Alder Highly, I can certainly uh, reach out to uh, Director uh, McGlynn and get that for you. Thank you. Yeah, I just um, I had gotten feedback from a constituent recently who um, had raised some concerns about the, I guess the low profile of mayoral mayoral appointments, and I think it's um, helpful to at least have a have a little bit of a, a little bit of context for the things we're approving. Thank you. Sure, no problem. And I do kind of have a running list of names that. I keep track of when people reach out to me, uh, particularly if they have an area of interest. So if, if any one of you are contacted by somebody that wants to serve, and typically most of the appointments, as you know, occur in April during the reorg. So I'm more than happy to, to you know, keep a list of people available. And if something turns up in their area of interest, more than happy to talk to them about those positions. All right, so there's a motion. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 And any opposed? And that motion carries. All right. Um, next item is uh, old business, and that would be R180 of 2020. And I'll just put that resolution on the screen. And is anybody uh, interested in in uh, making a motion for this resolution? You might recall this was for the city attorney, and I know certainly Attorney Dragney can probably give you more detail than I can. But in a nutshell, uh, the finance committee recommended that we roll over the agreement pretty much as is for one year. Um, and uh, Attorney Dragney has decided that given the COVID, it would probably be a difficult um, time to really look at an increase, especially as the budget has already been approved as well. Um, did you want to add something now, Attorney Dragney, or after the resolution is made? I just I just noticed in reviewing the packet that <clears throat> there's a there's a sheet included that should not be included. I'm not sure how it got in there. That it's a one page that describes 2021 rates. And, and that's not uh, what the contract proposes. The rates that are proposed are in the actual agreement for legal services. So if anyone had a question about the rates, um, I wanted to clear that up. Your Honor, I'll go with, ahead. Removal of, with removal of that document, I would uh, ask, ask for uh, 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 that this be, that motion be approved. Is there a second? Second. 
All right. Uh, any questions or comments? And then I would, I would uh, expect that, you know, we'll probably be looking at something offered up more long term uh, for the finance committee for for the next calendar year when this one will expire and you know they'll have some options they can look at but this one will at least get us through until the end of 2021 i believe um all right all in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. aye. and any opposed all right that motion carries um next item um, item number six is the um, liquor license uh, licensing matter and let me take that yeah I, I think that there's something that uh, Holly wanted to make sure that um, there is some information in the packet that you want to describe there Holly before we get started uh Sure, so I just wanted to mention before we kind of skipped over it, but under minutes and reports, the Public Safety Committee um, regarding the alcoholic beverage licensing proceedings for Shaker Saloon is in the packet. So the report that the committee um, is giving to the council is in the packet. Um, and then in regards to this agenda item here, we, uh, our ordinances require us to make a decision as to whether we will allow oral arguments, written arguments, or both at the next council meeting. So um, last time the council selected option C, which is to allow both written and oral arguments and to set a, and uh, so if we do that, we would need to set a deadline for filing the briefs as well. Um, and I can give you my uh, recommended timeline for that if, if you would like. Okay, uh, I'll turn it over to um, Alder Person Jensen then. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yes, uh, my recommendation uh, coming out of the committee would be to go with option C. That is the option that we used uh, previously, um, as uh, Ali had said. So um, I would make a motion that we uh, go with option C to allow both oral and written arguments, which will be presented at our next council meeting. And uh, look for a second on that. Second. Okay. All right. I would just, I would just add that we need to set a deadline for filing the written briefs. Um, so what we did last time was we, and shakers would be likely the people objecting to the report. Um, their briefs would be, their written briefs would be due Wednesday, January 6th at noon. And then if the prosecution wanted to object to their objection, theirs would be due Friday, January 8th at noon. So noted within. <clears throat> and Holly, do you send this out to their there are lawyers, so everybody knows everybody's on the same page and all the documents yeah. are there. Yes, so I've provided what we have so far um, to each party. I've provided that to uh, Chief Black's attorney, and then all the other information has been sent out to um, those speaking on behalf of Shakers. Yeah. Just for clarification, Holly, when you say all the other information, does that include the information that Mr. Meyer was looking for? Um, well, I believe he's specifically looking for the police report, which I do not have access to. So um, I think we went over this in the public safety committee. Um, the police, you would have to make a public records request with the police department, but right now that would not be available because it's an active investigation. Um, so everything else that I have has been sent to Shakers through Josh Quisling and I believe Chetta Huffman. Anything you want to add, Chief Luck? I'll only add to date, we have not received any requests from Shakers for any um, documents um, related to any of the matters before you. So uh, no open records requests were made, so none were filled. Sir, I'm gonna cut in here. 
Can um, people hear you? No, you we, would be out of order, sir. You're sorry. not allowed to just talk into the meeting. So I'm sorry that's okay, not well, can everybody in and speak? Because I did request to Holly that I wanted to speak. You're out of order. Okay. This is not a discussion with you tonight. If you want to have a conversation, I suggest you contact the clerk's office or better yet, contact the chief's office and then they can walk you through the process. We're not here to do that tonight. So the mayor, this is not a hearing. This is just uh, whether or not, you know, the procedure to go forward. I think that needs to be clear that this is just how we're gonna proceed on this. And so there will be time for, you know, written and oral comments later on, on, you know, as we move, move forward, this is actually not a hearing on this, this case. That is I have so a matter of a concern. Your Honor, I have a matter of concern and, and a question. Uh, go ahead with your question. Well, the, the question was, and it's really for Matt, our city attorney, uh, the last time we had talked about something uh, like this, we had we were advised uh, not not to discuss uh, the terms uh, um, with other people. And I was wondering if, if that still holds. Um, I think I understand what you're asking. And yes, you should. Uh, you're serving in a quasi judicial capacity and making a decision about this case. So you should, uh, you should not discuss this case uh, outside the context of the council meeting. Um, this meeting and the, and the next meeting where there will be in fact, um, an argument presented. I believe at that time, the council will have an opportunity to discuss uh, what action it believes it should take. But outside the context of the meetings, you should not be discussing this case um, with people, anyway. And then I would say with either the uh, people that we know or whatever, but also also other members of council for sure. Correct. Um, so I, that was my concern. I just wanted to raise it early in the process to advise because some of the people were not involved uh, in that uh, in that discussion earlier. So I don't know if you were intending to talk about it tonight, but I really wanted to raise it. Thank you, Matt. Did you have anything you. you want to add, Holly? Um, I guess I don't really have anything further. Um, so tonight you're approving um, both written and oral arguments at the next meeting. So the hearing, Regina was correct in saying that the hearing has already happened. Um, both sides have the opportunity to present witnesses and evidence. So at the next meeting, um, Shakers will have the opportunity to object to the report. Um, and then the council will make a decision whether that is to do nothing to recommend, or I'm sorry, to revoke or to suspend the license. It's the same process that we went through um, several months ago. So it shouldn't be news to anybody um, that's here on this meeting tonight on how this should go. Um, and, and actually, uh, the motion is for the same option that we did the last time. Anybody have any questions about the motion? No, and just, you know, just to make sure that, you know, both representatives have all the materials. So there is, you know, everything's followed. And if, if people think that they don't have the materials, it's, you know, it's, up to them to contact Holly to make sure that they do receive everything. I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah, and, and I want to clarify, um, I'm not sure Holly or Chief is actually the custodial of those materials. Let's let's get clarification on that. So I would be the, cons the custodian of all the records from the Public Safety Committee. So uh, the agendas, the minutes, the report, um, any evidence that was presented at the meeting I am the custodian of those records and I will if I will gladly resend them to the Shakers representatives if that's what they would like. Um, I can send them to them tonight. Anything further as far as police reports um, and things of those natures would have to go through the police department. I do not have access to those records. 
And, and we did have confirmation at the hearing that those reports had been sent and received. If I could, uh, Your Honor, just one one comment. I just wanted to uh, reiterate on this uh, something that <clears throat> something that Holly mentioned is that the Public Safety Committee report is in the minutes, or excuse me, in yeah, minutes and reports, which would be item two B. So it's right there. Everybody can read it. I think it, Holly also emailed it out to all of us as well. I think is that correct, Holly? Um, yes, I, the day that, um, after our last public safety meeting, so on the 17th, I emailed the full report to both the attorney for chief and all of the shifters representatives. Right. I believe it's, it's a, it's a fairly easy read. It, it's, it's not too complicated and, and uh, gives you a, a good synopsis of, um, uh, uh, of the process and, and, um, uh, the way the sub the um, committee meeting went. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? Um, there is a motion on the table. I believe it was for option C, right? And all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? Hearing none, that motion carries. Um, next item, R184 of 2020. This one comes from Public Safety, Alderperson Jensen. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Resolution 184, 2020, approving a Class A intoxicating liquor license, liquor and Class A fermenting voltage, well, I can't even talk tonight, fermented bulk, malt beverage uh, license transfer for Maryland, Jay Beckman uh, doing business as all through the house from 160 East Main Street to 144 East Main Street. I move for approval. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. And uh, anything you want to add, Alder Person Jensen? Uh, yes. This is uh, just simply uh, 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 they're moving their their business from one location to another. Uh, similar to what we did for the uh, cider house. Um, so uh, don't see any issues with it. I don't think the, uh, the chief uh, can comment on it if he wishes, but I don't believe he have found any issues. And uh, Holly, same thing there, no issues. So um, I would uh, hope that we can approve this tonight. Any questions or comments from elders? Your Honor, I have a standard question that I always ask for Holly in these situations whether or not uh, we have a we have a basically enough room for another or a, a, another liquor, liquor license in this establishment I just want to make sure that uh, we're not exceeding our capacity uh, Sid this so is Greg this is if I could Holly I, I can answer sure. that uh, this is just moving the license from one physical location to another physical location. It's not an additional license. It is the same license just being moved from one physical place to the other. Okay, I thought I heard that, but I uh, just wanted to make sure. Yep. All right, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed, that motion carries. Uh, next item is 185, resolution 185 of 2020. And this one was at the Finance Committee tonight. And all the person, Schumacher. R185 2020, resolution authorizing Opera House staff to invest an amount not to exceed 52,000 from the Opera House Fund to purchase a streaming system. So moved. Second. Okay. There's a motion and a second. All the person Schumacher take it away. All right. Uh, this is to purchase a bunch of uh, equipment that would uh, give the capacity to the Opera House for live streaming of shows. Um, this is uh, coming from some of their uh, Wisconsin Entertainment Venues COVID Relief Program award that they've recently gotten. 
Um, and in presentation tonight, Director Brem had noted that uh, time is of the essence on this one for approval because the particular cameras that he's in need of are in extremely short supply globally, and he's at least gotten a, able to reserve a few of them, and he would need to act on them quickly in order to actually get them in-house. Any questions or comments at this point? Otherwise, uh, certainly uh, Bill is uh, participating in the meeting if you have anything for him. I'm sure he'd love to talk about it. I'd love to talk about it too, Your Honor. Go ahead. And that is, uh, where is it? Where is the money coming from, Bill? Is that from our taxpayers' dollars out of a general fund or out of your current budget or what? No, the Opera House got a, a grant from the state of Wisconsin from uh, the CARES program for $136,000. And uh, so the intent here is to use a portion of those funds to purchase uh, the streaming equipment, uh, which I think is a vital component of our um, operations moving forward. And uh, that's where the money's coming from. I guess it is coming from the federal level to the state level, and then from the state level to us. So in a sense, uh, it's your federal tax dollars, but you know I, I'm glad to see the federal government reinvesting in in the states either through COVID relief or any other mechanisms, whether it be high speed trains or or anything. I understand taxpayers' dollars are taxpayers' dollars, um, as you know. So I will be voting against. I would like to say, Bill, thank you for thinking outside the box and trying. The Opera House alive during these really challenging times. Um, your little concert that you had, I can't remember who it was because I was during an RDA meeting at that time. I had friends that listened to it and they couldn't say enough about it. So job well done. And I think everybody's looking forward to more events like that. Um, we need the arts during this kind of challenging time. It's a good way to relax and enjoy something other than just bad news. So thank you so much. Any questions for uh, for Bill or comments from Alders? I, had a comment. Uh, I heard Lisa and then Fred. Thank you, Mayor. Um, well, I will reiterate the same thing that I said at the Opera House meeting and the finance meeting that I am really excited about the opportunity that this is going to provide for people with mobility issues. Um, we all know that it's not easy to navigate the Opera House if you're in a wheelchair or, um, you know, a walker or just limited mobility. So this is going to be an opportunity for people who might not otherwise be able to see these shows. Um, I think it's really forward thinking and, you know, the example I gave is that even the big movies are being released through streaming events. So I think this is, you know, um, again, very forward thinking in the way of the future. So I commend Bill for thinking outside the box. Follow the person hug. Well, I would certainly agree with uh, older person Reeves that it is very forward looking that the future will almost always include more technological advances of this sort. Um, the one concern I would have is the importance of the foot traffic, the actual physical in the Opera House attendees and the economic impact that they have on the downtown. So I would just want to encourage Bill to try to establish some criteria for what level of attendance uh, he would require before he started to sell online tickets very locally. Uh, one of the um, insightful parts of this is a lot of these bands have followings all over the world. They may buy tickets and they could be in a different country. But if we could uh, try our utmost to fill our theater before we sell locally, 
I think that would be best for our downtown. Okay, Bill, do you want to just comment on any of that or explain how it works? Um, I, I agree with everything uh, that was just said in that uh, the last thing we want to do is discourage uh, foot traffic in the downtown area. So, you know, the intent is initially during this next year, there's going to be a period of time when we have a hybrid going on of the live and, uh, and the virtual shows coexisting with each other. And that eventually the ability to stream will be something that simply is an additional revenue that we can add on our end for shows once we're back to in-person shows. I'll say that one of the other things that we're doing, the other thing that these uh, this video feed is gonna is gonna do is it's going to feed the monitors that are gonna be in, on the first floor of the building because another component of what we're doing to look forward to the fall and, and beyond is to develop the first floor of this building for things like concession sales. We've added a stage in the front room that was formerly the mayor's office. Um, that's a space where we're gonna have bands playing ahead of shows starting 5.30 uh, ahead of a 7.30 show with the idea that we're pulling people into town earlier, giving them an opportunity to have like a home base and then they can branch out from here and go up and down Main Street. So we're trying to, you know, do both things, make sure that we're keeping people coming to town and hitting the economic impact the way we need to, but also uh, being realistic about the short term and the middle term. Uh, as far as long term, uh, streaming isn't gonna go anywhere. It's gonna be an essential component of the revenue model for concerts. Any I'm other questions? Oh, go ahead, yeah. all the person highly. Wondering if the uh, opera system, opera house, uh, would need any technological improvements to support streaming beyond the, um, the budgeted amount, or if this covers any uh, such improvements, the the technological base of the building. The the only thing that. No, this covers everything in terms of installation and all that kind of stuff, cabling, everything like that. You know, the weak, the weak spot in any kind of streaming situation is your outgoing signal, uh, as the Wi-Fi in my office here at the building is testament to. I don't know why the Wi-Fi is so cranked down in here, but um, I'll be needing to, uh, you know, WSDO has been doing some really good streaming out of public safety over there. Back in the old days when I was the media services director and the opera house director, I know we had a separate uh, line out for WSTO, but that was also a different time in terms of internet speed. So, I mean, our connection to the outside world is that primary thing, making sure that we're able to, all the cameras will be on their own dedicated network. The only place where we'll touch the city's network is in our outgoing signal and the upload. So I don't think that there's gonna be anything there but worst case scenario we'd have to get our own uh our own internet account um, and hook it up to the building you know and i think we all know how much that would be you know 500 about 50 bucks a month or or so for a, a dedicated line i don't think that's going to be the case i i think with fiber coming into the buildings now and things like that that john's going to be able to help me work it out thank you Other questions or comments? All right, so we have a, a motion. Um, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 And any opposed? No. Uh, one no. Any abstentions on this one? All right, that motion does carry. Um, next item is one R R one eighty six of twenty twenty. The tree wise men. I just love saying that, <laughs> especially this time of the year. And this one is coming from um, Public Works Alderperson Majeski. 
All right. Uh, Public Works presents R 186 2020 resolution authorizing and directing the proper city officials to enter into an agreement with the Tree Wiseman LLC to perform tree trimming services on city owned trees. The Public Works recommended approval on December 17th with no extensions. And I so move. Second. I'll second. And there's a second. And the other person, Mayeski, you want to tell us about the Tree Wiseman? Uh, this is basically we are subcontracting out um, urban tree pruning for the uh, 2021 uh, year, and they were the low bidders, but they were also a quality firm, which has then worked for us in the past. All right. Anything you want to add to it, Director Abear? Yeah, just just a few things. Um, like Alder Mayeski said, they were uh, our contractor last year, and uh, they did uh, great work for us. Anything that we asked them to go back and do, they they did. Um, and so we're we're happy that they um, are the low bidder, um, and we're we'll be happy to have them back in town next year. Uh, just a little background: we had the city divide up into five different areas, um, so we basically trim one area per year so that we, in a five year period, trim every single tree uh, that's part of our uh, urban forest on uh, city owned properties. Uh, this next year is year four of five. Um, it's been going really well and uh, we'd like to continue that going forward. Uh, this is also within our, our budget, our operating budget. Um, so we're really pleased with the numbers that we got back in our bid and, and uh, hope that you approve it tonight. Any questions or comments on this one? And then we also had some other good news at Public Works. I don't know if you shared that out with everyone on the uh, ash tree. If you want to just share that quick, as long as we're talking about trees. Sure. Yeah, our, our uh, EAB program has is, is, uh, uh, been completed as of this year. Uh, we are under budget basically by about $100,000, which was originally approved in 2017. Um, since 2017, we've also planted over 1,400 trees back into the urban forest. Uh, we took down about 900 trees. And like I just said, we, we planted 1,400. So it's been really a successful program. Uh, we eliminated the, the risk that was out there caused by EAB. Um, and we're currently treating 87 uh, ash trees, uh, trying to keep those going. Uh, so all in all, it was really a good program for the community. Uh, we, we eliminated risk and then also planted new trees. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Brett, which variety did you say of ash trees you were planting? I didn't catch that. <laughs> yeah, all varieties. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, well, no ash trees on these. They're called maple ash. Yeah. Maple ash. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I don't think they sell those anymore. There are a few varieties that you can still safely grow without uh, being affected by EAB, but not many. Not many. Sure. All right. So we'll get back to the to the motion. Sorry, I steered you off course, but certainly I think that's a a huge thing for our community to have that work done. And congratulations to, to Brett and his team on that. And and thanks for the support from, you know, past and present city councils um, to get that approved. So that was started before my time as mayor. So we appreciate um, getting that completed. Uh, any questions or comments on that? No, I just wish that we were all in person because I know that Sid would have had a, a real good joke or something about the name of the the tree company and you know yeah. what happened Sid? the mayor stole my thunder so. oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'll remember that next time all right so we have a motion on the table all in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. 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 and any opposed none opposed that motion carries Item number 10, uh, advanced directive initiative. And I'm gonna have uh, Alder person Lagaki tell us what that is and what we're trying to do here. Absolutely. Um, in the packet is a 
very brief description about the importance of perhaps some medical documents uh, that could make a difference for many of our families, both financially as well as emotionally. And so um, it is my hope. Um, I've long seen uh, direct connections uh, between families and the amount of monies that they spend on their health care and the quality of health care that they get um, um, having a huge impact on um, their life trajectory. Um, and so one of the things that can be done early on uh, with anyone is, is to complete an advanced directive. And in my years of work at a trauma center, as well as on the cancer floor, um, um, I've seen the difference that these documents can make, and these, more importantly, these conversations that people have. And so I, I see it's directly tied to our role as city leaders. Um, so what I'm hoping to do um, is during this time of COVID, is encourage people to get their documents done. And I would love to see that even start with us. Um, this is one of those taboo subjects. This is one of those things sometimes we just don't want to think about till we need it. And that is not the time to be thinking about it. It's usually too late at that time. Uh, the best time to talk about it is at a time of safety and um, homeostasis and when things aren't majorly stressed. So we are in a stressful time though. COVID has not been an easy ride. And a lot of people are thinking about their health and how quickly it can change. So uh, we're launching a pretty grassroots. Any group that is associated with Stoughton that is interested in trying to get these documents done in this simple piece of paper, we're providing links to that. But more importantly, I mean, sure, provide information and say do it, but we actually would like to invite groups create 15 minutes, and this is not a very complicated document. Complicated part is you getting yourself ready, you knowing who you want, want for your agents and to talk with them. And if anyone ever wants to have those discussions, I spend a lot of my days having those kind of discussions, but um, always more than happy to help people with their questions and comments about that. So um, I'm hoping that this body sometime after the new year might want to look at getting their document done and if they wanted a, a short time for question answer uh, i don't think that would need to i guess because a few of us would be together i guess it would need to be noticed but perhaps we could get our documents done if you don't have a power of attorney for health care document um so we're going to go grassroots, kind of getting organized, going to offer it for a while. But boy, wouldn't it be amazing if we could get more citizens of Stoughton involved in this? Um, the city of La Crosse undertook this back in the 1980s when they noticed the need. And 85 to 95, depending upon the statistics that you look at, a very high percentage of their city has had advanced care planning discussions which is like not just your basic power of attorney for healthcare document, I mean the discussion and their healthcare costs are down and their citizens are pretty happy with their healthcare because they have talked about it and explored it. So I want us, I see this as a potential response to this time and I want us to kind of go forward and starting with us and any invited groups, there's there's plenty of people. We're gonna use the hospital. We're gonna use the existing, the senior center does this. We're not recreating the wheel. What we're trying to do is just build, build a ground spot. So thank you for letting me get some basics out. And um, I don't know if there's any questions, but I'm hoping we as a body would be willing to say we've done our documents. That's really the thing I'm putting out there right now. Oh, Your Honor, can I ask Gene a question? Sure, go ahead. I'll have a question. Gene, I, I, I raised this last time. You, you had mentioned in this document, witnesses. Um, as I understand it, uh, these have to be witnessed. Um, and uh, could you address who can witness these documents yes. as they're being signed? 
And um, as I understand it, especially if they're signed in the in in a hospital venue, I believe a, I believe a, a master's level social worker is required to what is that is that true? Um, it, it, there, there's more than that. Um, this is going to be a community initiative. Um, and so there's standards for the witnessing uh, at the community level. So anyone else who is age 18 could witness the person who is drafting the document's signature. But there are caveats. You cannot be related to that person by blood, marriage, adoption, domestic partnership. You cannot be taking care of that person in a direct care situation. You cannot be um, in that person's, uh, be a recipient of that person's estate. So like you would benefit from their passing in any way. And you cannot be any of the agents mentioned in the document. So, um, I think I had sort of just mentioned when when we first did when when um my domestic partner at the at the time and I we had our neighbors over and we had dessert and we did our documents and then we toasted each other with a nice drink uh, that we could actually complete the document uh, amongst ourselves and and yet we had fit that criteria so this will be a community based initiative. But Sid, I, I know you being a former social worker, um, uh, there are there are car carve outs usually in healthcare policies. Um, so they're all related to that part of the Wisconsin law that states you can't be taking care of people because I've been a medical social worker a long time. I take care of a lot of people, but there's a carve out for me that I can be one of the witnesses along with chaplains. And then my healthcare system has said that volunteers can could also be witnesses as long yeah, as they yeah. fit that criteria I just had announced. Just, just, to, just to clarify, like, a, like if, if a person's in a hospital setting, a, a physician or a nurse who are taking care of that patient they cannot, cannot be witnesses. Witness. So just, just, just so everybody knows, there are some caveats to uh, the witness procedure. And I've done, I've done a fair amount myself when I was working with people in, in, a, in a hospital setting. So, I think it's a great idea. I, I think it's a good idea to do it, do it sort of uh, together. And uh, I think it's, I think it's a, a great thing that you come up with, uh, James. Thank you. Yeah, and, and just this kind of summarize that at this point we did have some meetings that involved uh, Stoughton Health, the city with HR, um, the library, and there seems to be a genuine interest in doing it. I know for myself and for our family, you know, I've. I'm a full-fledged thing. I've already done mine, so I'm good. Um, which, once you go through it and understand how complicated and difficult it would be if something more unforeseen were to happen to you, and the burden that you'd be putting on family and friends to process this, you know, you know, I'm glad that we did it. That's not the type of thing you really like to think and talk about, but it's necessary, so you do it. Um, and I know we did send out the information to city staff uh, leadership, um, you know, to get them involved in the process. And I expect that it'll gain momentum from there. And I appreciate, um, you know, not only Elder Lagaki's leadership, but also her sharing her her skills with us to help lead us through this process. So I'm hoping with um, President Hirsch um, to offer a, a, a meeting time and, you know, to be honest, these can be small groups, one or two people. They could be families. Um, these are free documents. The, the, the virtual platforms are being made available to us. Um, we'll be able to copy documents for people who need that type of access if they can't get their copies made. Um, it's really a magnanimous thing that you can do. And so, um, like I said, I, I think it starts with us. And so I'm hoping that if you don't have a document completed, you'll be open. Um, it's, it's really, it's not a very revealing. In fact, 
it covers only the legalities. Um, the things that I talk about um, with sharing what your medical wishes are, um, letting your family members know what's important to you and what's not. Um, there's great resources for that. Um, but that, that doesn't go up. Well, it could if you write some things in and there's resources for that. But really, it's naming your agents and the breadth of the permissions that you're going to allow them to speak to. And then it's, it's once it's witnessed, it's a legal document. The more involving things that you hear me talking about and, and all, those are conversations. Those are uh, awareness of what your medical needs could be, what medical needs you have now, where your values are at. Very nice, easy stuff out there in the internet world to help you process that as well as live trained people in all of the healthcare systems who want to have these conversations. And, and just one more comment, and that is that there's all kinds of options. It's just not one option available. You, uh, you can choose. That's the reason why it's so important, because you can choose the options that you want. Uh, feeding tubes and, and special, special issues related to keeping somebody alive and all that. So, so you don't have to be afraid of this. It's, it's something you can, you can come up with a, your own individual plan. Is that correct, Jean? So the state of Wisconsin statutory document, you'll be naming your agents and the permissions they can speak to. And if you have questions about those kinds of things that Sid just mentioned, those are things that, that are additional, that happy to provide resources. If you have any of those kinds of questions, I want to kind of stress this simple part. Um, it's advanced care planning where we have discussions about life sustaining uh, procedures and equipment. CPR, all kinds of things like that. Um, this process is really just who do you want representing your wishes if you yourself are not decisional. All right, thanks again, Jean. Um, if there's any questions, um, certainly you can pass them along uh, to Jean and then uh, uh, we appreciate the conversation. Uh, the only other thing we have on is uh, the motion to adjourn. Who would like to make the last one of the year? I'll do that. <laughs> is there a second? Second. All right. And wishing you all the best. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All in we, favor? We need, we need to, you're, yeah, you okay. Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Uh, yeah, I oppose. Yeah, there's, there's one in every crowd. Thanks again, everybody. It's been quite the year, and we certainly appreciate the support um, from the council, you know, with all the things that have been going on. So um, it's been a ride, that's for sure. Merry and Christmas, also. everybody. Be safe, everybody. Get your vaccinations when they're made available to you. Thanks, Jane. <laughs> Bye-bye. Good night, all. Bye.